Hello and welcome to Solid Workstation. My name's Stuart and in today's tutorial we're going to look at creating this furniture screw. This is great for beginners of SolidWorks and it's good as a refresher for those that are intermediate level as well. We're going to look at producing this using some of the tools in SolidWorks such as a Revolve Boss Base. We're going to look at the Helix command, we're going to look at pitch and revolution, some extrude cuts and we're also going to look at putting an appearance on this uh, with a zinc finish and look at rendering that out as well by adding a camera and using the photo view 360. If you run into any problems during this tutorial get in touch using the comments section below and I'll be more than happy to get back to you and hopefully we can re resolve some of the issues that you might be experiencing. Best of luck everyone and let's get started. Okay, so I'm in SolidWorks, I'm going to go to File, New and Part, and I'm going to draw this in the front plane. So front plane, Normal 2 and Sketch. First thing you're going to do is get a center line and draw a center line straight across the page, like so. And just to check that that's horizontal, just check you've got a horizontal um, relation here. If you haven't, okay, and you've drawn it, for example, like so, the horizontal relation won't appear, but you can make that by left clicking, going over here and clicking on horizontal. Okay, and we get a horizontal relation there, so that we know it's straight. From here, we're going to draw the profile of our furniture screen. Now, we're going to draw half of it, and then we're going to produce a uh, revolve boss base. So your profile should look similar to mine uh, when you're finished on the screen. I'm not being too precious about these dimensions at this moment in time. I'm just trying to get the scale roughly right. Okay, going across. Back down, across back to the center line and back to the origin, back to your start point. And you know it's a completed sketch because the inside will turn uh, purple. Okay, let's give this some smart dimensions. So I want the overall length to start off with and then the overall height. So the overall length is going to be 50 and the overall height of this is going to be five millimeters. Okay, let's smart dimension this up now. So we're going to do from this side. Okay, so let's start from this side and let's work our way across uh, the furniture screws. So I'd like this to be 0.2. I would like this distance here from that line to that point to be 12. I would like this overall height here to be 3.15 and I would like the height from here to here to be 2. This angle, so from this line to this point, you'll get a set of arrows. We want this arrow and we need this angle to be 45 degrees and we want the same on the other side. So this line, this point, this arrow, 45 degrees. Okay, we want an angle here, so this line, this point, this arrow, we want this to be 60 degrees. Now that's saying that that has been decided to be 45 degrees. Let's just take away this dimension. Smart dimension. Ah, the reason for that is this equal. Let's just delete that one. Let's give this a 60 degree angle, like so. And let's put this back in at 3.15. 
one, five. There we go. Okay, let's move across the model. And we've got we've got some dimensions down here that we need to put in. So I want the overall height of this to be 1.8. I'd like this line here to be 2.4. And from this point here to this line here, I would like that to be 4. We're still underdefined, so let's have a look where we need to make some changes. That's this line here. So this line here, we want this to be 3. There we go, fully defined. Fantastic. Okay, so once you've got those measurements in, uh, we're going to do a revolve, um, a revolve boss base. So we need to exit the sketch first. And once we've exited the sketch, we can then go to revolve boss base and it's picked up our line already. If your line wasn't in, the in there, okay, all you need to do is click on this axis of revolution, click on this line, and then you're ready to go. 360 degrees in here, and green tick. Okay. Perfect, so that's the main shape that we need to take. The next bit that we're gonna do is we're gonna look at creating um, the Allen key hole on the top. We'll also look at creating the thread as well. You can look, have a look at this in an isometric view by pressing control and the number seven on your keyboard and you get a nice isometric view of what you've produced. Okay, so our next step, let's go into a front plane and let's go normal two. And we're gonna create a sketch of a center line from our origin, just across like so. And we're gonna grab a line and we're gonna draw a profile in here. So our profile is going to take the shape, so line, and we're going to go up, we're going to go across, we're going to go up and meet this edge here, back down to our origin and back across to this point. Okay, let's smart dimension this up then. So we want a height here of two millimeters. We want this angle here to be 60 degrees we want the length of that point to that point to be 0 0.6 millimeters and we want from this point here to this point here oops go back just control Z on my keyboard there from this point here to this point here we want this to be four millimeters and we want the angle of this line here so clicking on this line clicking on this point and we want this arrow we want this line here to be 45 degrees however we've got some issues here so we've got those as being parallel which they're not so we're going to right click that we're going to delete that um, particular get rid of that particular um, relation that we had and we're going to
go again and smart dimension this line up. So from there to there, we want that angle, and we want this to be 45 degrees. Okay. If you ever have any problems with um, angles and lines, like this one needs to be 60 and this one needs to be 45, but the, they're saying that they're already defined or the dimension driven, it's usually because you've got a relationship that you've put in there or that's automatically happened when you've been sketching that you need to delete. So the problem that we had there was it was saying that these lines, uh, we'd ask those to be parallel. We hadn't. It was just that when we sketched them, they took that um, they took on that geometry and took on that relation. So we just had to delete that uh, and get that get that sorted. So we've got 0 0.6, we've got 4, we've got 2, we've got 60 in here and we've got our 45 and we're fully defined. We know that because it says here. We also know it because all our lines have turned black. Any lines that are blue are underdefined and need um, some dimensions or some relations assigning to them. So from here, we're going to go into Features and Revolve Cut. And we're going to use this line. It's picked it up already, line 1. If it hadn't done, all right, and this was blank, just you pick up that center line that you drew as your axis of revolution, and we can press on the green tick. Okay. Then from here, we're going to click on this surface. We're going to go Normal 2. We're going to go to Sketch, and we're going to produce a polygon from our center point. I'm going to sketch that out. Press the escape key, click on this line or any of these lines and just make them vertical. And we're going to green tick. Then we're going to go and grab a smart dimension and smart dimension this up at 4.34 millimeters. Like so. Okay, from here we're going to go to features and we're going to do an extruded cut and we're going to cut through here by 3.7 millimeters okay it's not updated on the screen the reason for that is you need to click on the screen to see the update okay so I've just done a left click on the screen to see the update and then green tick okay so we've produced the allen key um, cut out there to house an allen key the next bit that we need to do is we need to uh, complete our helix. So the best way to do that is, is to click on the surface that we're interested in and go normal to. And we need to create a sketch. We're going to click on this line. And we're going to say convert entities. Let's just move that round. And then we're going to go into features, curves, and helix spiral. Now, we want our pitch to be 3. So we're in pitch and revolution, we want pitch to be 3, revolutions to be, we were at 11.5, however if you've made your furniture screw longer or shorter, you can just increase this, okay, and your revolutions will go around. Obviously we don't want to go all the way up here, we're going to keep it at around 11. Okay, 90 degrees start angle, okay, you could change that, you could have that at 0. Okay, obviously you'll need maybe a little more revolutions to get round. Um, but we're going to have it at 90. And we're going to have our revolutions at about 11.25. We're going clockwise. And green tick. So we've got our helix in there. The next thing we need to do is produce our profile uh, to, in order to cook this. So we're going to go into a front plane and normal two. And we're going to sketch out our profile here. So we need to sketch a center line to start off with. And our center line is going to start over here. And then we need to create a polygon using a line. Taking on the shape of a trapezium is our cutting profile. Like so. Pop in a center line. And we're going to assign some relations. So I want to pick this line, this center line, and this line, holding down the control key, and make those symmetric. I also want to select this line and this line, and I want to make those equal. So let's give this some smart dimensions. So to start off with, let's dimension from 
the base of this trapezium to our center line. And let's say that this is two millimeters. Then I want the height of this trapezium. I'm going to put in 1.6 millimeters for this. Then I want um, this top length. I'm going to put this in at 2.99. put some radius curves on this bottom bit so radius curve uh, sketch fill it and let's go in with a 0.3 radius left click on this line left click on this line yeah it's saying that there's going to be um, there's a relationship that's happening at the moment being equidistant it might change just select yes and here and here and again yes and green tick and we want another smart dimension from this point here to the end of that fillet and we want this to be 0.5 millimeters and the last thing that we need to do is create a pierce relationship with the helix so we're going to click on this point here we're going to hold down control and click on the helix and we're going to select pierce okay and then we're going to say green tick from here we're going to go into features and we're going to say we're going to produce Oh, exit the sketch first, my apologies. Exit the sketch first, and then into features, and we're going to do a swept cut. It's asking us for our profile. That is the shape that we've just drawn, and the path is the helix. So we need to be in this one. It automatically goes down. Sometimes you do need to click on them. Uh, on this particular one, the sweep cut, it automatically goes down and jumps into the next tab. So the cut is the helix. You can see it's, it's working that out now and we get a little preview of what might happen and where the um, sweep cut is going to stop and we green tick like so we can hide our helix so go into our helix and press hide and there is our furniture screw so let's apply some appearances to this we're going to go into appearances let's go into our metals we're going to choose zinc and let's go with a brushed zinc finish. Drop it on, choose body, then we're going to set up a camera and we're going to uh, finish this with a render. So we're going to go into our appearances over here with our display manager. We're going to go into the last one which is view scene lights and cameras. Let's edit the scene. So let's give this a studio scene and let's make it a misty blue slate. So let's drop that onto there. Perfect. We can play around with these dimensions uh, if we want. However, I'm just going to press on the green tick. Uh, from here, I'm going to add a camera. So I'm still in scenes, lights and cameras. Right click on camera and add a camera. Our camera's over here. This is what our camera is, um, where it is in space. And this is what we see with the camera. So I'm going to move my camera forward using the blue arrow. I'm going to move it up using the green arrow. And I'm going to move it either left or right. Probably right on this occasion. Like so. A bit more. Let's move it a bit down as well. Oops. There we go. Something like that. And then from there. I can green tick. I can go into my SolidWorks add-ins just to ensure that Photo View 360 is turned on. If you haven't got SolidWorks add-ins available, right click and you should see it in this list. Just make sure it's ticked and make sure that Photo View uh, 360 is greyed out. This means that it is uh, selected. If it looks like that, it means it's not selected. Clicking on it and it's dark grey, it means it is selected and you can start to render. So we're going to go into Render Tools. We're going to go into Render Region stretch this out and we're going to go into final render I'm going to pause the video there I'm going to come back to you once this is finished and I can show you the final render of the furniture screw and there we have the final render of the furniture screw I hope that's been a useful tutorial I hope you've gained something from that if you've struggled at all at any point 
please do get in touch drop me a comment in the comment section below and i'll be happy to get back to you and hopefully we can resolve some of the issues that you face during this uh, particular tutorial don't forget to like and subscribe to solidworks station if you're new to the channel and you're visiting us for the first time and i'll see you again soon in another video tutorial from solidworks station thanks very much everyone stay safe and goodbye